Now, sexual health services are at breaking point due to funding cuts and soaring demand. And this increase is being attributed particularly to those over the age of 65. The local government association warned without extra funding there could be an increase in sexually transmitted infections. Well, let's talk some more about all this uh, with Dr Helen Lawal, who specialises in sexual reproductive health and contraception. Goodness me, we talk about all the strain on the services around uh, up and down the country. But I mean, when it comes to sexual health, uh, you know, the, that absolutely has to be key, doesn't it, to people's health and well-being? Absolutely. And I do feel it's often overlooked. You know, it is an essential service. We need sexual and reproductive health services to prevent unwanted pregnancies, to make sure that women, particularly on the contraceptive side of things, which is where I work, have the autonomy over their fertility. And it's important for well-being. And from the sexual health perspective, if we're not providing adequate services, then we're going to see a, a rise in STIs. And actually, we've done really well. We've been working really hard. We've had a fall in STIs over the past decade. And remember, when we talk about STIs, we do also mean things like syphilis, resistant gonorrhea and HIV. Gosh. Why this particular concern about the sexual health of over 65s? Are, are you seeing that uh, in your everyday practice? Yeah, this concern has come from a 20% increase um, over a couple of years between 2017 and 2019. But that 20% increase still only brings the numbers to around 3,000 um, positive STI cases a year. So the numbers are still relatively lo low. Most of the cases we're seeing of STIs are in the younger population. However, there is an increase, and um, actually one of the worst cases I've ever seen of primary syphilis was in an over 65, so um, it is still really important that we do consider all age groups as accessing the service. So whilst you're seeing this, this increase in demand, you're also seeing a number of services being slashed, which is obviously a bit of a perfect storm. Um, what are the things that people you know, can do if they can't get access to a sexual health clinic? Um, how can they, they manage their sexual health themselves? Is it something that GPs can help with or you know, are there any sort of over-the-counter tests people can do? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think one of the reasons that we're seeing such an influx is because GP surgeries, particularly on the implant and coil contraceptive side of things, are stopped providing those services during the pandemic and haven't picked them back up again. So we are having to pick those back up again. And I've actually been employed into the service in Leeds as a GP with a specialist interest purely to work through the backlog. I'm seeing women with implants and coils who, which have expired, you know, one to two years ago. Um, so people can access contraception in other ways. We provide online contraception services so they can go online on our website. And in general, you can go online and, and order a, a swab or a urine test to check for chlamydia and gonorrhea. And also some um, online blood tests as well are available. Um, and some pharmacists are providing contraception, especially the emergency contraceptive pill, if you do feel you are at risk of um, uh, an unwanted pregnancy. But it, it's not going to be enough. You know, we saw over 4 million um, patients in, in 2021 um, and so it's not going to be enough. What we need is we need more funding um, to be able to provide the services and prevent a negative impact on people's um, health and well-being. Gosh. And what would you say to those who are over 65 who feel there may be some stigma attached to coming forward when they have concerns about their sexual health? Yeah, and I'd be really sad if people were feeling that way. And what I would say to you is we are here, we are open we're a very non-judgmental service. We're here to provide you with the care that you need. And if you don't feel comfortable coming into a sexual health clinic setting, and you can still see your GP for the basic sexual health testing, which would be a swab or a urine test and a blood test. So some people might feel more comfortable in actually seeing their GP in, in that situation. But otherwise, our doors are open and please do come forward. It, you know, it's just as important we're seeing you as anyone else. Yeah, although, of course, it's incredibly difficult to get face-to-face -face appointments with your GPs yeah. as well. So it is difficult out there for patients, that is for sure. Uh, Dr Helen Lowell, thank you very much for uh, shaking off the taboo and talking about what's sometimes a bit of an embarrassing subject. We do appreciate it.